Hey everyone, and welcome to the Atomic Cinema Experiment, our sci-fi movie podcast from Mail Fuzz TV, also called The Ace. I am Peter, and joining me as always is Tara. Greetings, citizens. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know, I feel like I intentionally give you a much better intro than Connor. Connor, I, I do the <laughs> worst possible job I can. But you and Tim, you and Tim get really nice intros. Mm-hmm. I even get my own intro line. You do, you do, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tim just says like, "What's up?" or so. I don't know what he says. He says hello, so, some variation of hello, like a boring bastard. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's pretty wacky throughout most of the review, but for some reason, that the hello he just he stumbles and it's so normal. <laughs> he's only been doing this for like how many years? <laughs> <laughs> Three. <laughs> three years yeah three sounds right uh but yeah uh this is a this is a sci-fi movie podcast uh we talk about sci-fi movie every week um sometimes we also have a bonus section with mystery science theater at the end we don't have that this week we couldn't record uh, or we couldn't watch one uh this past week which is why we don't have one but we should have one next week so look forward to that but the movie we were talking about today a uh, first time watch for both of us is tetsu the iron man a film that came out in 1989 is a Japanese film uh, directed by Shinya Tsukamoto and it is a cyberpunk surrealist horror film. I yep. <laughs> think that was an accurate description of the genres. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. A little bit of Cronenberg thrown in. A little bit of Cronenberg, a little bit of David Lynch um, with techno erotica <laughs> oh yeah definitely add that part in yeah a little, a little bit of techno erotica uh so we'll start spoiler free as we always do we'll give you warnings somewhere in the middle before we go into spoilers uh but here we are so this is uh tetsu the iron man uh n- nothing to do with uh marvel's iron man just for the record <laughs> just in case there was any confusion uh, it's not mm-hmm. tony stark the iron man Tetsu is not, you know, Japanese for Tony Stark, <laughs> just in case. Um, if any kids find the movie, yeah, they'll be highly disappointed. Disappointed? They'll be scarred for life. They'll be in therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the parents will be crying from their eyes, going, "No, little Timothy, what are you watching?" I thought Spider Man would show up at any minute. <laughs> so uh this is a very art house film it's actually a very short film it's only 67 minutes it's only just seven minutes over the academy agreed amount of what it classifies as a feature length film oh i didn't know that it had to be over 60 minutes it has to be over 60 minutes i believe uh, at least it was at one i don't know if it's changed but at least for a long time that was the the rule so yeah which and i guess i think below that's a, a short film short film yeah, yeah. uh so it's a black and white film and it's very art house and experimental uh i i I'd describe it as industrial almost actually yeah i don't I often des- i don't often describe films as industrial but this one really strikes me as industrial yeah well yeah like uh all that scrap metal everywhere mm, yeah a lot of scrap metal really think of factories yeah yeah uh, i guess the basic premise of it without getting into spoilers is just a, a man, a salesman in Japan, becomes infected with like part of his body starts like growing me- as if he's like becoming kind of a cyborg almost, but it starts to spread and he's gradually becoming more and more cybernetic and having more metal metal parts, and it's about why this is happening and the the, the, the just the insanity that this causes in his life. Uh, and that's basically the movie. That is that is all I can really say without getting into spoilers. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask Tara a very important question here. What's that? <laughs> I couldn't think what it could be. Did you enjoy Tetsuo the Iron Man? Uh, believe it or not, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I think this movie needs to be seen. It's <laughs> such a bizarre little movie. <laughs> <laughs> do you know i watched this earlier than you did and you uh-huh. know I, I messaged you and said something along the lines of this movie's effing weird but it is so weird <laughs> but there was a point about 10 minutes in. i'll, I'll say it's, it's when he's sitting next to the, the woman at the like, train station um right and the, maybe the first sort of couple of things that happens after that 
where I, I you said is it good and I was like I don't know if I want to answer that right now I feel like I need to see more of this and I also kind of had this feeling where I'm like I think I might like how insane this is but Tara might hate this like she might hate this well yeah because I had a really hard time with uh with the other art house movie that we've watched so far which is a uh, high life mm-hmm. i had a difficult time with that one because that one was trying to say a lot of things <laughs> and i don't know if i can get past just the art house of the whole film in order to get what the movie was trying to tell me also just um, just to remind about <laughs> just to remind the audience that tower's favorite film is 2001 a space odyssey that's not art house i mean it's art <laughs> the masterpiece as 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 pretty art house. I mean, it may not be classed as art house because of its budget and because of the like the prestigious director, but it's an art house movie. I don't know. Especially to a modern audience, that's an art house movie. Because of the end, because of the Beyond Jupiter stuff. Not all of it. I mean, the the, the pacing, the the way it moves, the but yeah, the, the last like thirty minutes <laughs> is like. I don't know. I tend to think of art house films as being more like metaphors, like just using imagery and impossible scenarios to like, like abstract, you know, like an abstract situation, things that aren't part of reality in order to, to tell you something. So the last 15 minutes of 2001 aren't abstract and metaphorical. Yeah. But the rest of it, I don't think is. Hmm okay 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 we'll have a discussion of that yeah i didn't did get you on a uh, some some david lynch movies i'm curious to see how you'd fare um yeah you know i don't think i'm i'm really all that familiar with david lynch films the fact that you are positive on this makes me think you might be open to the weirdness not, not that it's like this exactly but this this one definitely conjures up a little bit of a razor head um oh yeah yeah. So Tim Robbins. Yes, that sounds right. Oh, that's not Tim Robbins. That's not Tim Robbins. Is it a guy that looks like Tim Robbins? I think. Like it, I think. Hair? I think he looks like a chubbier Tim Robbins, which is why I sort of almost agreed with you there for a second. But I'm sure it's not actually Tim Robbins. But you're making me doubt myself now, so I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to. Oh, check. I don't know. I've only ever seen like the cover. <laughs> yes. Yes. A razor head. Here we go, 1977. No, no, no. Uh, Jack Nance. Hmm. I, I see why you thought it was Tim Robbins, though, maybe. Like a young Tim Robbins. I can see why you thought that. Yeah, but I guess that would be pretty young if it was 77. Yes. I mean, maybe he was making movies at the time, but he would be pretty young. Hmm. So, yeah. So so you're actually kind of positive on this. Uh, you, you, you think yeah. it was going to be soon. I... Yeah, I kind of like it as well. I don't necessarily think every chunk of it holds up in the sense that there's definitely some stuff towards the end where I kind of felt like, all right, get on with it. <laughs> like, yeah. Like the point's been had I mean, now. It's real bizarre. Yeah. Um, but like, and it's actually not that hard to understand. Once it actually gets to a certain point where it explains a couple of things, it's like, oh, okay, I can actually, I understand what this has been doing like almost the whole time now. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely a little surreal. Don't get me wrong. There's some elements that that are a little bit, you know, not as like clear cut. But the 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 basic gist of what the story is and what the motivation for the characters are is is pretty clear past a certain point in the movie. Um, it's got like, very interesting imagery and sounds. Uh, like there's a lot of yeah. uh, industrial sort of sounding music. There's a lot of um, black and white. And there's a the great thing it does well where there's like a POV shot sometimes of like. Bl- where the the video is like like a really bad VHS tape, like intentionally, it's it's got that kind of staticky kind of line going up, and it's like, and it, that that's used to signify certain types of POV. Is it almost as if you're seeing the POV of a robot, but not exactly that, right? Which is explained later because that first one you're watching, and you're like, why does this look so different from like low quality from the other imagery? Yeah, and then you know when you get the the reveal as to why, then it's like, oh. Because it's POV, I get it now. Yeah, <laughs> it's also very. Um, I think the black and white makes it very beautiful, but 
but it's also incredibly grotesque. Oh, yes. There's so much, I guess, blood. It could be oil. which <laughs> <laughs> just, like, spurts out at random. Um, I mean, in black and white, they look the same. Yeah, yeah. And because you're dealing with both the human body and so much machinery and metal, it's, uh, I guess it could be seen as oil. I'm not going to lie, there was about halfway through this film, I thought this might be the one that breaks you, and you're like, you know what, Peter, I'm not doing this show anymore. I think I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I was I was into it. It was <laughs> it was uh, very bizarre. Um, as far as what I can extrapolate for themes of the film, um, not a whole lot's coming to mind. But I did enjoy watching it like the entire time, and like you said, it's pretty short. Yeah. It's only sixty seven minutes easy to watch um and you're not going to see anything else like it <laughs> no you're not uh what was yeah. what's funny actually Someone who used to, uh, live in japan um i, I kind of like seeing that culture and what they would uh, I, i'm not into a lot of japanese cultural stuff but i i understand a little bit more of their culture from living there for a few years and like the stuff on the train station um, it was just, it's very interesting to see, especially all the sex, because everything in, in Japan is so private, <laughs> you know, that, that seeing so much sexual stuff on screen like that from that, I mean, I know they're into like weird tentacle things too, but I, I'm just not used to seeing that from these kind of, from their films that I've seen from that culture. Yeah. Um, no, this is, this is definitely... I've seen a lot of Japanese movies, and I feel like this is definitely more on the extreme end of some of the what, what it's doing. Obviously, the other examples you maybe come up with is stuff like Itchy the Killer, or maybe, you know, stuff like... So, some Takashi Miike films are, are very sort of violent or have extreme themes or kind of like that. Um, this, as far as themes goes, and, and sort of try to talk about what the film is really about in terms of themes and the idea that he's becoming this, this machine, I guess it's the... Well, I can't even use that word because that kind of gives away the twist, hon. Um, we'll talk about it in spoilers. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll talk about it in spoilers. <laughs> I have to talk about what, what the reveal is to talk about what, what him becoming a machine, at least in my mind, uh, in my simplistic the definition mm -hmm. or interpretation is going to be. Um, but no, it's definitely an assault on the senses, like something, or like nothing I've seen in a while. Um, it's you know it's yeah. it's loud it's stark it's it's there's there's a point actually right at the start of the movie after the the opening prologue scene uh where the our main character is i think it's, it's it's a dream he's having but he's in like a like a factory or some place with a lot of machinery and like he's in pain with this this like sort of sound that's playing and the way it's shot is like a music video it feels like a music video and he's like yeah, he's I, like, I got music video vibes when watching it too yeah he's, he's like a dancer in a music video at this scene he almost like he is dancing but like um yeah and, it, and again it's another scene that makes sense the, mo the more you kind of uncover what's what's going on um yeah so i think we just have to go to spoilers now i don't, I don't think we can dance around them anymore yeah I, um yeah <laughs> Right. I agree, but I do think if uh, it has my recommendation, I think people <laughs> should watch this movie. It's so bizarre. <laughs> oh god, how many people are going to take that recommendation and think they're going to get some some sweet fellow and they're going? <laughs> Wait, Tara thinks this is interesting. Oh, <laughs> I'm no longer trusting her I think opinion. It must be seen. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, full spoilers. Uh. So movie starts with this this opening kind of prologue scene. We never see the character's face, but someone crawls into what is like a like a fort or a den that's been built out of machinery, mm -hmm. and there's there's like um for for some reason there's there's like stickers or like pictures of like athletes all over it. Yeah, there's like the same bolt and stuff around. Yeah, <laughs> they're all like Olympic runners. But he, he he's there, and I, I guess maybe the idea being that he wants to improve his running speed because he's a he's a a techno fetish or fetished. If I say the word properly, yeah, that's what they refer to him as in the credits. Yeah, like fetish, fetishes, fetished, fetished. 
if you really if, into metal. If you really have a and not not, not the music either. <laughs> um, uh yeah if, you, if you're someone with a, a an extreme fetish you're a fetished i think <laughs> i'm just not gonna bother saying it it's too hard of a word yes he's a he's, he's, he's a person with a fetish he's a t- techno fetish person anyway uh so he like cuts open his leg like his thigh and he's got like, this metal rod that he inserts into his thigh into his body uh Almost as if he's trying to replace one of his bones, although he doesn't seemingly take a bone out. He just shoves a metal rod into his leg. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like a like a one inch rod too, like thick. It's, yeah, it's not pleasant looking. No, no, no. It's but right away it gave me this sort of feeling. Like, okay, certainly we're dealing with obsession here. We're dealing with you know uh, uh, fetishes. I mean, sex is a big theme in the movie, uh, and we'll get to sort of the other representations of that later on, but. He uh he basically falls asleep and he wakes up and his wound is rotted and there's maggots crawling around both the rod and his open wound and that of course and obviously he's freaked out because why wouldn't you be because maggots are freaking disgusting and he's like running outside and again you never see his face he's just, it's like a shot of just his legs and he's he's running in this really weird way where he's kind of hobbling but you know more in one foot than the other because of his leg. Um, and he gets hit by a car, uh, is how the, the prologue scene ends. And then we get a title, and we come in and we meet the, the salesman, uh, who, and we get this music video West nightmare sequence. And then he wakes up, and almost immediately he's got this thing where he, he's got like a bit of metal sticking out. It's, it's almost like a pimple, but it's metal. And he pulls it out. Doesn't think anything of it, but he pulls it out. Uh, I think he tries, but he touches it, and then it's Bert's like a ton of blood just everywhere. Oh, you're right. He puts a, he puts a big band-aid over it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he, which was really striking is one of the, the, the first things I noticed about the movie is like the sound mm. in it. Like everything is just so high contrast when he touches it, like this, this extremely loud sound, like industrial machine, like sound comes out. And then the, it just sprays like a can of spray paint, all of blood all over the mirror and stuff while he's shaving yeah and then he's on the phone with his girlfriend who is is felt weird since the incident whatever the incident is and we don't really know uh but he's like you know you know whatever there's not a lot of dialogue in this movie actually it's very kind of you know just actions for for a lot of it so he, he goes on the train to work and he gets off he sits on the bench and there's this woman sitting next to him and she looks over and notices a little pile of like basically just techno junk, a little bit of machinery and metal. And this is the first time we get like a proper POV shot, I think, uh, from this little hump of, of metal. As, as if it's alive, as if it's something that can can do or has a has an awareness at the very least. And she but goes to you touch also it. Also, see something inside of it, like or from the view of something inside because you see a person like the back of a person and it's moving around in this area full of metal and it's kind of it's kind of suggesting that it's from this whatever this goopy pile of metal is or it's something yeah it's it's kind of it's it's only a quick shot you're right but it's it's kind of um the the, i instantly took it as it's the techno fetish because it reminded me of his den it's like he's inside his den of all these these machinery and Yeah. yeah As if that's and his... he is moving around in kind of a sexual way. Yeah, um, but obviously, obviously, this thing is far too small for him to be in. Right. right. So okay. I, I, I wasn't exactly sure what they were saying. If it was like he's in there, or <laughs> it's that thing is still a part of him somehow, and he's manipulating it. Yeah, because well, because I took the opening scene that he was hit by a car. So I, my my instinct here was that he's like possessing like machinery mm-hmm. so he's in there and it's represented by seeing him physically be in his little den as if he's controlling things but he's really just possessing the techno stuff okay. and sure enough like this kind of like infects her and she like grows like a big techno part on her hand uh and she and she ends up like acting really erratic and chasing the salesman who's then scared and starts running away from her uh, and we get this kind of chase sequence scene, and I think one of the things that we should mention here is some of the camera work in this movie is really like surreal and bizarre. The way it like speeds up, or the way it like like j- jitters around, or even her movement yeah. along with the camera. Yeah, it, it kind of well. with that theme of just uh, 
technology. Like look at even the way the camera worked and stuff. It was very, uh, it's something you would see in a lot of like post-apocalyptic movies now. Mm. The way the camera movement is. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's almost like the camera itself is glitching and doing these erratic <laughs> things and it kind of adds to what's going on in the, the, the scene. Yeah, erratic is a good word for it. It's very jarring. Yeah, there's a lot of jarring stuff in this. Um, yeah. Because uh, actually, the, the the video effect that's on the POV shots is actually in some of the dream sequence at the start. Because I was noticing that just every so often there'd be a frame where there'd be this like weird like bit of like fuzz going up and down. I was like, that's weird. Why is yeah, that? Yeah, like there? you're shooting a, a TV screen and it has the lines that go up. Yeah, well, I get that reference because I'm a similar age to you. For those of you who are under the age of twenty five and have never tuned a TV or a v- VCR, um, this was something that you used to have to do back in the analog days. <laughs> thank you tara you made me feel old <laughs> i thought i'm gonna to have to explain that you may, you might as well just say oh it's like getting a page like you know get, i got paged I was like we have to explain that tara half the people that are watching this have never heard of a pager i'm an old i'm an old too i get these references <laughs> there's only so much comfort i get about you of, of you being slightly older Mm-hmm. We don't have to go into specifics. <laughs> yes, no, no specifics, no, no specifics at all. So we'll get on with the review. Uh... <laughs> oh, am I holding up four fingers? That's weird. Uh, what the hell that happened? Um... <laughs> We're going to talk about this after. I'm in trouble, guys. I'm so I'm sorry. If I if I don't show up. <laughs> for any reviews for the rest of the week um send help <laughs> uh so yeah this chase scene where she chases him into a bathroom and he locks himself in a cubicle and she's like and this is the other thing that's weird here is that no one else notices a thing here like even though there's people in the train station no one like very quickly they're in an abandoned like like hallway at least in an abandoned bathroom and it's like it almost feels surreal that like like they're almost still in a dream where they just get to places that are really quiet and secluded really easily without anyone noticing them leaving or well they're very polite people you know they don't want to be in anyone's business <laughs> that man is clearly being stalked by this crazy woman we should we shouldn't intervene we should just just you know what about our business uh but you know and again it's, it's very violent she gets she's like jumps up on top of the uh the the cubicle and this this has like a sort of chain link roof on it and he actually stabs her in the face with a pen uh and eventually like runs out and gets away and this is the first time we get this insane super speed camera where like we go through the streets yeah. and it's like like is this a flash movie all of a sudden like what are we doing here um and he gets back to his, his own like sort of his, his garage to say it uh, for, for the world to understand uh garage for for me i mean hell hell, hell earlier on i said band-aid that's a plaster just for you know for the record <laughs> oh really plaster yeah that's what we call a band-aid yeah interesting plaster is something we use on walls oh we call that plaster too oh Oh yeah, because there's not other words in the English language that like get used for multiple things. Well, I guess Band Aid is actually just a uh, like a like a brand name. What was it? Oh, yeah, like tape. Bandage is what it, yeah. they're called, but yeah, like the most popular kind of tape you can get cello tape, which is like the... Kleenex instead of tissue. Yes, yes. So, what do you call it if you, if it's not Band Aid? Um, I guess we probably do call it a Band Aid just because it's so widely known but it, it you know it's a bandage nah, i'd say a bandage is like actual like you know fabric that you're wrapping i mean that's semantics i suppose but sure just in my head I don't, no, okay now we're doing this we also use like the term q-tip which is a brand as well yeah we don't call, we, i don't cotton. you call them uh, cotton buds yeah cotton buds yeah <laughs> <laughs> I see like we've, we've devolved into another uk american word exchange um it's, they're just so enlightening <laughs> <laughs> every, every so often there'll be one that i never understood and i'll, I'll finally see something that kind of clarifies what it is and i'll be like ah saran wraps cling film ah <laughs> 
And I'll have that moment of like, that's what that is. Yeah, I don't usually have to deal with that. Although I kind of dealt with it in this movie. I was trying to figure out if like maggots were known to cause insanity in Japan. Like, is that like a, an old wives tale or something? But I couldn't find anything. Yeah, d- 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 I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, who, who knows? But uh, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, well, the, the film is kind of implying that it does, but uh, I thought that was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, maybe that's like a cultural thing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Well, you know, because it's found in rotting flesh. Maybe it's... I don't know. There's something about it rotting. Like, it's causing your brain to rot if you have maggots and they'll eat your brain who knows you know i was just i was trying to find something <laughs> anyway, so we have this this super speed transition which apparently you know the salesman just ran home right and that's like you know he's got into his garage uh but techno lady shows up as she's followed him and she she you know, tries to attack him again we have again another scene where he has to fend her off and uh it gets kind of bloody and violent and again she's moving very erratically it's <clears throat> Not unlike if you've played Silent Hill 2, it's not like the nurses in Silent Hill 2, but with more of a, a techno, like, m- you know, metal kind of kind of thing going. Um, Never played it. That's fine. But, I mean, let you know. So, some people will have. Some people will know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, if you're talking to me, I don't know the reference. <laughs> Well, I'm talking to I'm talking to you and the audience. You, you, you're both included in the... Co- it's, a, it's a three-way oh, dance. Do you really go up? <laughs> yes people see these tara yes right so this is this is kind of the big opening of the movie right and there's like it's hard to place where a lot of the hints of like this you know techno fetishist uh gentleman and like his influence behind things because there's, just, there's lots of random shots where it'll cut to a pov thing or it'll cut to like him and his little den uh we don't quite understand what how much power he has what influence he has or anything like that yeah. Right. And I think at this point we've already had kind of a flashback to the the incident or part of the incident where him and his girlfriend are having sex up against a tree. And yeah. we get the POV with the static sort of watching this happen from, you know, a weird angle in the distance. Uh, and we just get a little bit of that. Um, but then we get a, a nightmare scene, if you want to call it that. Ooh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> In which his girlfriend is dancing very, I guess it's more tribal than erotic, but she does have this giant metal hose, which is essentially a big strap on. It yeah. it, it does have kind of like its own dexterity where it like bends and like, you know, goes up and down on its own as, as if it's like a, a living snake almost, but it's, right. it's metal. Yeah, the movement implies that it, yeah, it's... Uh, it has life. She's not controlling it, yeah. And he's he's just kind of on all fours, crying, kind of the whole naked. time, naked. Yes, he's naked. Uh, and then if, anyway, it ends with the 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 heavy implication that she's she's <laughs> raping him. Well, I was going to, I was going to say uh, uh, penetrating, but yeah, sure. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be consensual, but <laughs> no, I mean, no. I mean, it's a nightmare, and it's a giant living metal strap on. So it's it's like. I don't know. Yeah, and we're talking like six feet long here. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Like, like if she actually put it all in, he'd be dead. Like, it would actually puncture all of his organs. <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, nightmare, nightmare fuel. Yeah, nightmare fuel. Uh, unless it's unless it's her dream, in which case it's like just some weird like she she has to see a therapist. If that's her dream, she has to see a therapist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's his dream, then he's he's clearly scared of his girlfriend, and he should probably break up with <laughs> um yeah it's a very bizarre um it's a bizarre scene but it does make sense like later on yes it does uh so well i don't know if i go that far but i'm curious to see why you think it makes sense later on i'm curious to hear this interpretation later um yeah there's connections okay okay so <laughs> so they're having like dinner or whatever and Again, like all the sound effects are really heightened, so it's kind of disgusting to listen to because you're hearing all the, the the clanking of the spoon and the like the the slurping and you know all these kind of things. Is this after they have sex? No, this is before. Okay. You, I think it's before because I remember thinking it's weird that 
he, he's already got like a metal thing because but by the end of the fight with the techno lady he has like more metal in his hands so he's kind of like covering that up uh, yeah and he's still got the you know the the, the bandaid on his face you got all, all these things happening and even though she knows that there's something wrong with them and even though he's clearly distressed they still end up having sex um very uh, this is fairly passionate um yeah she's, they're like climbing up walls <laughs> yeah um <laughs> they, 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 they change positions like three times in the space of like 10 seconds which you know I, <laughs> which maybe, maybe a bit much but um you know very, very sweaty very passionate and uh, uh, you know that's that's fine however <laughs> upon conclusion of this how do i say this um the salesman dick has his <laughs> dick it turns in to a very thick mechanical drill that's about i don't know 10 inches long something like that i don't know it's really big right it's this big thick drill yeah. bit like four inches thick yeah yeah um and at first he's just freaked out and he's like sort of scared by it, by it happening um but then he kind of loses his mind a little bit and starts like trying to attack her and she has to like fend him off and like stab him with like a fork or something like that like there's it's chaos so she chases, yeah. chases him out of the bathroom and there's like back and forth and then it's already been implied that she'd been really depressed if she if he left. You know, she's like, no, please don't leave me, please don't leave me. Uh, not that he was thinking of dump her, but more in a, like a, like don't die kind of thing. Like you know, don't leave me alone. You're right. Yeah. She, you know, she seems very kind of uh, attached and uh, needy. Um, and after she thinks she's killed him, what she hasn't, she sits on the drill herself to commit suicide. It's the worst kind of seppuku. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Seppuku via the vagina <laughs> using a giant like four by ten drill. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it's gross. Yeah. And she's just she and she's sort of sitting on top of him for a little while while, while it's spinning. So there's like you know, there's blood and there's erratic movement and there's there's all sorts. And then he wakes up and he's kind of like not crazy anymore and he kind of realizes what's happened and he's becoming more and more like mechanical at this point. He's got like you know parts in his face. He's he's getting parts in his legs and to the point where it's not it's not long after this where he's completely covered apart from like one sort of window that's about here on his face, so you can mm -hmm. sort of see his mouth and one of his eyes. Um, yeah, and his feet have like these. Um like jets on the back of him i don't know what when that happens um i think he gets them before i think well i think that's actually what's supposed to explain the super speed home is i think he's it's supposed to be the jets kick in right he's got them like attached to his ankles so yeah. he can get super speed so he he's been like transforming like before his penis transforms into a drill yeah because he had the bit in the face he had the bit in the arm he, he seemingly had the jets already in his ankles right and when they were doing the food thing like he was like they were like feeding each other <laughs> really like sexually and like uh uh also uh i don't know it, it was very oh, gross oh. it was also like very metal like like every time that she would touch the food there would be like this metallic clang to everything and it wasn't just utensils yeah to the point where she you know no, no. lick the sausage the breakfast sausage no. or whatever and he seems to have an orgasm when it happens and it's also like a combination of the metal of, of like the all the metallic stuff coming together with wait i think with that. i think you were right in saying the sex scene was first because isn't it like in the sausage that prompts the transformation of his dick Oh yeah, you're probably right. I, th I think it, it was through, like the, the drill comes through the, the kitchen table. table. Yeah, yeah. Ba basically, <laughs> he gets a bigger erection than he's ever had before because his girlfriend is licking this sausage all all sensually. <laughs> yeah, but it's all like these very metallic sounds that yeah. she's doing too. So I think it's about like his uh, his fetish for metal like starting to come through as well. Yes. Uh, so. Mm. After she's dead and he's like transformed more, he gets a phone call from the techno fetished, fetishist, um, and he's like, "I'm coming for you." 
And I think it's around this point in the movie where we get a full flashback uh, to when when the techno guy was hit by the car. And sure enough, it's the salesman and the girlfriend who get out of the car. They're the ones who hit him. And mm. they, in fear of being, you know, reprimanded for this, they actually take his body and dump him in the woods. And for some reason, that puts them in the mood for some loving up against the tree. Yep. <laughs> uh, and the techno fetish, well, well, like he's technically still alive and watching, or if he's like, this is like him post death, and like he's become, you know, he's he's blended with with the, mach- the machinery, with the metal, with the with the mainframe, <laughs> if you will. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, but he's coming, and he also moves at super speed. Uh, on his way, he puts on like some makeup. He gets like all this like fancy like eye makeup. He's got these like, like stars around his eyes, and yeah, he's very like eighties punk. Yeah, and he flies down the street, comes in. So even though he's technically dead, he's still like he because what he actually does is he, he he takes the body of of the girlfriend. He takes her dead body and possesses it, and he kind of comes out of her. So even though we see him coming down the street towards the house, it's just representative of the fact that he's on his way rather than being literal. <laughs> Right, right. I guess the, they're implying that she has some kind of a metal thing now too from him, like a, like almost like an STD. So now she's able to like transform. Well, first he possesses her, and then there's like this really Cronenberg style, like but her body like splits. bubbles up and yeah. um, and uh, becomes like this gooey puddle of bubbly human mass, and then he comes out of it. The the metal. Well, I would say instead of an STD, I would go as far as to say that he technically impregnated her with the drill, yeah. and this was this was birthing the new body of right. of uh, of the techno fetish guy. Which, I mean, does this movie sound insane to you, folk? Like, does, does this sound like we're describing something that's this normal and you know a happy go lucky film for the kiddies? I'm sure we're describing something that people need to see. <laughs> we certainly don't do it justice just by like trying to recap what happened. Yeah, and they basically fight and chase each other around, and eventually, you know, the salesman you know runs outside. And I think this is the part of the film where I'm not as into it. That the last like 15 minutes or whatever it is here, um, other than the very final moment where the final thing happens is the one point in the film where i felt like it was just doing things to be doing things i, I didn't really feel like i was getting a lot out of the actual imagery itself uh as, as they were chasing each other but ultimately you know they, they, they he gets the salesman sort of pinned up against a, a wall maybe they're in a factory and he shows him a vision actually of like a future where everything's machinery as, as if he wants to like bring about the machinery revolution <laughs> right he says he wants to like cover the world in rust yeah as you do but he can only do it with both of them like he needs both of them to to make this dream come true <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so then they actually combine they they, they, they basically they're, they're both like transforming and having more and more metal and they form this big metal like abomination where the one one guy's head's in the middle of it the other guy's head at the top and they're like okay let's go and you know start this apocalypse and they go down the street together or as one big thing and that's the end that's, that's when it goes to credits that's that's the end of the movie <laughs> uh, yeah it's so hard i like the, i love the design of the creature at the end <laughs> it's so goofy but it's also really like i, I mean it's still in the same uh, aesthetic as the rest of the film oh sure yeah there is something about it like kind of wobbling when it was mm. like driving away <laughs> that kind of took me out of it a little bit because it's just that slight wobble like it's a giant hollow paper mache thing mm-hmm. that kind of comes through. Yeah, I, I'm i trying to think of like some of the themes here and like or try and understand why like what it's trying to say about obsession and fetish and what how it passes from the one guy to the next and how they have to combine to to do something you know to 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 make the new world that they want to make um yeah i don't know if i can i don't know if i'm capable of doing that of making that connection but i i kind of you know like the whole sort of uh slasher movie element of it where 
you know, some a guy is dying unjustly and his the people who caused him are like just having sex and not like even seeing if he's still alive in the back of the car or whatever. And then he wants revenge on them by killing them. It's it's kind of slasher movie esque. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I can see what's in um, of some eighty slashers. I I um because I th- like the idea that he wants him to suffer by like doing to him what he, it's it's almost like he's thankful for dying because it allowed him to finally kind of like merge with the machinery in a way that he couldn't achieve before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's almost like he wants to share that with him. And he wants him to be an ally. Is as scary and as weird as all the stuff before it is, like it does kind of feel like he had an end game in mind. Um and he, he even comes from his girlfriend well, yeah, saying advantage, so you kinda of have to think that. Yeah. But he, he even comes from his girlfriend, which kinda of has this weird connotation of like, no, I'm your partner now. I, I'm your like other half now. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't know. I'm I'm trying to make I... sense of it. <laughs> uh yeah yeah as as far as the dream thing goes i i just thought of that as like the metal taking over like the metal fetish coming through in his subconscious Mm -hmm. and it's just manifested itself in this way which you know sort of makes sense because then he gets a metal dick (laughs) that's a drill Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are the connections that i saw from the dream yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and I see what you're saying. Um, and obviously the idea that, like, it all comes back, because, again, sex, textualization, and the fetish is kind of a big part of this. Um, and, you know, the fact that they were having sex when he was dying leads to why so much of what follows is very sexual. Like, the the, the dream that he has where he's sodomized, very sexual. <laughs> uh, this the sex they have themselves, and then, of course, the, 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 the drill deck, which then destroys her. Uh, I guess... And it is the merging of two, two different types of of metal and uh, organic material, like that. That also kind of implies sexuality, um, like the birth of something new, a new kind of creature. Yeah, it's, yeah. It almost looks very swamp thing like. Oh, yeah, I wonder. Is- I wonder if the idea is that, in order to fully become what the the techno fetish wanted to be, he needed so like a a techno person to impregnate. A normal person to create this true mix. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's maybe it's kind of like a, it's kind of like Alien that way. Yeah, that said, the salesman's already pretty much that anyway, so he he achieved it well enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, he he does seem like he's a complete mess. Like he doesn't have any kind of purpose when he is just the metal man, like the Iron sure. Man in a way. Like, um, so maybe he does need the combination of the other guy in order to be able to have a a new life because <laughs> otherwise he's just kind of going crazy. <laughs> he's just this blob of scrap metal. <laughs> I love all the uh, I-, I love all the imagery of it though, like uh, the um, the stop motion style of just mm. the of all the different just scrap metal coming together. Uh, I thought that was really, it was really grotesque, but uh, you can't really look away from it. Oh yeah. I think, I think it's a good choice to make it in black and white. So it's easier to, to watch. I I really like this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Also, I want to point out that it works. I want to point out that the, uh, the description IMDB spoils the reveal. Oh, it literally says a businessman accidentally kills the metal fetishist. Oh, I'm glad I didn't read it first. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. That's not no. Don't put that in the description. Yeah, that's like past the halfway mark that we get that reveal. Yeah. So, are, are you saying to me that you want to do the sequel at some point? <laughs> yeah, there's more than one, right? Yeah, Tetsuo Two Body Hammer. I think I said the last one came out in like 2009. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Tetsuo the Bullet Man from 2009. Yeah. Because I was looking up the movie to try to find it to watch, and I saw that there was one from 2009. I'm like, that's probably not it. Same director <laughs> on both of them. Oh, really? Yep. All right, yeah. I suppose we should. 
Yeah. See how this trilogy goes. <laughs> yeah, not not back to back though. I mean, I, I need I need time to process. No, this. I need I need a reset button. Yeah. You know, I love how we went from like like easy Men in Black last week to Tetsuo the Iron Man this week. You could get two different, yeah, two more different films. Movie I think I've ever seen. It's the weirdest movie you've ever seen. I love it's the weirdest movie I've seen. I mean, it's it's, it's in the, the the conversation, I think, but it's not the weirdest. I don't think. Uh, well, you've probably seen more movies than me, and you watch a lot of horror films, so I'm sure there's something weirder. This That's one true. could probably be a Screams After Midnight episode. This this could be this is one of those ones that falls into the like the either or camp. Like Alien could be either a Screams or an Ace. Yeah, I guess it's the cyberpunk that makes it science fiction, but it seems more like a horror film to me. This is like a body horror movie. It but kind I of it, watched it. It kind of is, but at the same time, I would also put like Cronenberg's The Fly on this show instead of Screams. That has teleportation in it. That's more science fiction. That's it. That's all it took. That's got teleportation in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually. <laughs> actually. Uh -huh. um, yeah. No, I like the movie as well. It's it's got a really unique feeling to it, and like I'm certainly gonna, not going to forget it anytime soon. And I think. No. I like how it feels. I think I think some people who don't like art house movies like don't like things that feel different and. One of the things I love about this movie is that as soon as it starts, like, this feels grimy and dirty, but also, and yeah. the black and white makes it feel of, of a different world. It feels like we're in a... Because even black and white is, like, it's shades of grey. And what is grey? Metal is grey. Like, like, everything's, like, shades of steel and chrome and rust and, uh, you know, like, iron or, yeah. or whatever. Like, everything's those shades and... The, the, it's just all the sound cast. effects are just so harsh. I like the score too when we got it. We didn't get mm. it all the time, but uh, I I liked it. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, it's a pretty unique little movie. <laughs> it's a very short watch. I won't call it an easy watch, mm -hmm. but it's quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was never bored. Yeah. I, you said you were born around the last 15 minutes, but maybe because the last 15 minutes is a lot of the same types of scenes that we've seen before, a lot of running away. I, th I think that's what it is, yeah. But, uh, just like, I don't know, like just more of him becoming even more of a ball of metal <laughs> <laughs> and like recharging with electricity. Yeah. I wonder if there's also some hints in the film about how the salesman doesn't, he seems to dismiss his girlfriend a lot and maybe she is just there for, for sex so the idea that he's using her is then kind of like a, a sign of like how she's going to be used again for like for both of them you know where mm -hmm. where the the techno fetishist just uses her to to create himself and it's like she, she's disposed she's disregarded she's not important it's about you and me it's about you and me sharing this and changing the world <laughs> I guess so, because there is that really strange scene of when they actually combine for the first time, mm -hmm. and then it's like going inside of the machine and seeing just the regular two of them naked together in inside the machine. Yeah, I mean, do you think there's even like it is very intimate that way? Do you think there's even some subtext here of like like the salesman maybe being denial of who he is? Like, I don't know if it's necessarily straight up saying that he's gay necessarily, but just the idea that uh, there's parts of him that he's not. It, yeah. yeah there's parts of him that he's not accepted uh and this is kind of finally so if, if you take the film as more of a metaphor rather than literal then the idea of like shedding the the girlfriend is kind of like you know kind of breaking away from from the lie and accepting mm -hmm. who he is yeah well maybe it is applying it i don't know but uh i, I didn't get that from the film when they were when they first saw it but um I, I think the techno fetish is putting more. on makeup and then them being naked together in the uh in the metal contraption yeah, at the end. They're both naked and they both look so like vulnerable inside. Mm. That I that's more of what I saw it as like uh like they're both the same now. Sure, okay. okay. They're both the same and they're both weak. Or not weak, but um uh, I guess vulnerable. Yeah. I, I didn't see it as a sexual thing, even though so much of the film is sexual. Yeah, I maybe we could read that. Maybe maybe next time you watch it, you'll see it. Maybe next time I watch it, I'll be like, nah, not really. 
doesn't feel that way. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like them merging together in and of itself is a very sexual thing. Mm. This, this, this yeah. is them coming together. It's, it's that unlike actual sex, they never actually break apart. <laughs> They're just together now. Yeah. As one unified thing. Monster. Transformer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I am fascinated as to what the sequel might be. Is it, is it this big metal thing going around or is it new characters and it kind of links in or is it just a thematic thing or, or whatever? I don't know. Was it the next film like pretty recent after this one and then a big jump till 2009? Yeah, the second one was 1992. So it was just three years later. Mm. Yeah. I, I love the look of it. Like It looks like a, like you said, like a really dirty, dirty, you can almost taste the metal in your mouth when you're watching it oh sure and like um it it looks very 80s like an 80s punk film oh yeah it does um although at the same time it also feels older because of the black and white and because of the the shooting style right yeah because it's very amateur looking yeah and uh yeah the black and white and then the the first woman that you meet kind of becomes a zombie in a way Mm -hmm. so it does have that like night of the living dead feeling this is. Hmm. I just read the description on IMDb for the second one, but I'm just I'm confused. <laughs> well, don't tell me because I know they spoil things. That's true. That's true. The first one did spoil things, so I, I won't I won't tell you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, we'll get to the second one at some point. But uh, in, interesting, uh, interesting film. <laughs> very interesting should we rate it <laughs> uh, yeah we should rate it it's an experience if nothing else this movie is an experience uh and yeah. if if comparing it to a razor head with a bit of cronenberg and the cyberpunk elements like sound interesting then you'll probably at least be interested in it if not like it uh so tara what would you rate tetsuo the iron man uh, yeah it is uh, a bizarre little film um, I'm really glad I watched it. I, I don't. Uh, it's it's kind of a hard one to rate. Uh, I don't I don't love it, but I'm so <laughs> glad that I watched it, and I think it'll mean some. Uh, I think a lot of people are gonna hate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And at sometimes there are point, points where it gets a little too art house, and there are points where it seems a little amateur. But overall, I think it's a very unique film that should be seen, and I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a seven. I think that's a pretty fair score. Um, I think I'll go with a seven as well. I agree with that. I think it's the sort of thing, though, that on a second viewing, it could, and with some like time to think about it, it might like sort of sneak up a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe when we watch the sequel, mm. it'll uh, bring up what we liked about the first one again. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but that is Tetsuo the Iron Man. Um, so hey, I didn't get yelled at for picking this movie, so yeah, that's that's a plus. Nope. That's Although a- you did pick the weird ones. Well, because I'm picking the ones that I've not seen, and I've seen all the normal ones. <laughs> I think you picked the next one, too. Did I? I think so. I should check what the next one is, because we should tell the audience what the next one is. Yeah. Where are we? I'm getting my... Well, maybe not. Maybe not. My schedule's up. If it's a blockbuster movie, it's mine. No, yours... No, yours the next one was yours, for sure. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so yeah, no Mystery Science Theater bonus section this week, uh, but we will have one next week, but not the following week after that. <laughs> uh, because right. because next week, or in two weeks, anyway, Tara's moving house, uh, and so there's one week where we can't do Mystery Science Theater because of that. Yeah, I'm Actually, not moving house, I'm moving across the country. <laughs> I'm still moving house. I'm moving from the East Coast to the West Coast, and it is a long drive. Yeah. And what world is that not moving house? Yeah, I'm moving house, but like <laughs> moving house implies I'm moving to another house nearby. <laughs> okay, fine. Moving across country. Yeah, I'm going to need to take some time off. Yes. 
Uh, so you'll have a Mystery Science Theater episode on the next thing, but not in the one after. And maybe not in the one after that, depending. <laughs> Yeah, they might be on hiatus for a little bit. Just just for two weeks. So at most, it'll be two weeks off, uh, and then we'll be back to having them every week. So uh, don't think I'm giving up on them because I have a lot that I still need to share. Yeah, have you picked what the next one is that we'll be doing for next week? Ooh, no, but I can decide. Do I, I decide? Yeah, go on. Well, while you think about it, I will tell them what what, what they're getting next week. Uh, we're doing Stargate uh, for the next episode. So exciting! Yeah. Look, look forward to that. I love that movie when I was a kid. Yes. I think it will not hold up. <laughs> mm. Yes. Uh, mainstream option <laughs> from Tara. Yep. Mm. It's okay. We dipped our toes in the art house and now it's back into the cesspool mm-hmm. of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, you picked a Roland Emmerich film. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, <laughs> hey, the man does sci-fi. I mean... <laughs> it was unavoidable. Uh, so yeah, what, 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 what's the next Mystery Science Theater? Come on, wow me. Do we do a Joel? Do we do a Mike? Do we even go nuts and do a like a Netflix one, like one of the newer ones? Oh yeah, um, I'm not very familiar with those. That's more of a lucky dip. You could just be like, yeah, that one, or okay. you could pick a favorite from Joel or Mike. Let's do another Mike one. Mm-hmm. Let's do Overdrawn at the Memory Bank. Overdrawn at the Memory Bank. It's actually a comedy. Oh dear. Yeah. It's good. Why do I get the feeling that all the funny parts will be the Mystery Science Theater people and not... Oh no. It uh, It's a movie that stars Raul Julia. Oh, I like Raul Julia. Yeah. And he's great in it. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. So there'll be Mr. Science Theater bonus section next week. Um, but that is, has been, uh, I guess that's been this show. Like, this has been uh, episode, was this 10? Oh, maybe. Let me check. Let me check. Us. We have to know that before. Uh... I think so. Because I think I remember last week you saying it was nine, not quite 10 yet. So. Yeah. Let me just uh, check. Uh my 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 raw footage here um yeah this was episode 10 10 episodes 10 experiments will be completed (laughs) we're the greatest 10 episodes baby so uh here's the committed if we can do 10 then we can do 100 (laughs) yep Uh, if we can do 100 we can do a thousand Oh, um, I don't know if I make that kind of commitment. If we could do a thousand. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What have I done? We could do 10,000. Did I make the main sci fi movies? I don't think there's that many weeks before we die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not even if we live a long time. 10,000 weeks is a long time. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You're right. I mean, I mean, it takes two years to get to a hundred. Well, hopefully, technology will uh, will help us live longer after that. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, we'll all be we'll all be cyborgs. Do your job. We'll get augmentations and we'll be cyborgs. Yeah, we'll all become Iron Men. Yes. Well, and, and women. Tends to be not like uh, <laughs> not like our DJ. <laughs> yes. Um, and some of us will have, you know, ten foot like mind of their own pipe strap on cocks i mean if this is a warning it'll be me yeah <laughs> this movie's telling us <sighs> <laughs> the audio people just got silence and then a thud and then a, a giggle <laughs> they have no idea what's going on here tara was simulating what her uh my giant six foot long dick would look like yes <laughs> <laughs> it does the wave apparently um it's done, man. yes yes and then one day i'll just i'll get a random erection i'll think nothing of it and then a drill will just go through the <laughs> table there'll be sawdust everywhere well at least we'll live forever <laughs>
Always looking the bright side of life, yes. Uh, mm. But that is a uh, that is a uh, episode ten of the Atomic Cinema Experiment, and uh, we can we can you know move on to test subject eleven next week. Uh, is worth mentioning a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, if you enjoy the show and you want to support us, Tara, where can they do that? Well, you can go to our Patreon. It's at patreon.com slash TV, and you can donate as low as a dollar per month. And with that dollar, you get extra bonus episodes of The Ace. We have two up so far. Um, Actually, by the time this goes up, the third one will be up. Oh, no way. I don't even know what the third one's going to be. Oh, no, wait. Well, I'm, oh, I'm confused. No, you're right. It'll be the second one that's up by the time this goes up, not the third. Okay. That's my so bad. From. <laughs> that's my bad. And almost the third one. Yes, yes, yes. The second, yeah, the second one that should have been up recently, um, was um transfers. So, uh, check out that if you're a patron. You get that on the one dollar tier, one dollar, and you get the bonus episode, uh, every month. Um, yeah. And if you want to rate us on your podcast app, give us five stars. Uh, that helps us out a lot as well and spreads us out to more people who may enjoy the show. It also, uh, it just makes me feel kind of, kind of fuzzy. I, I would describe myself as tingling. Not mildly fuzzy. No. Well, you see, describing myself as tingling is a reference to the hit television show Buffer the Vampire Slayer because it's what Principal Snyder says when he describes how he feels when he gets to expel Buffy. Uh, he describes himself as tingling. Uh That's a cheat. <laughs> you did not get points for that. Uh, oh, I didn't see a Star Trek reference in this episode. So, that's okay. I was going to make a comparison between the Borg and... <laughs> the Iron Man. Oh, that's a that's that's a like low blow, or like machine and man coming together. Low hanging fruit. This would have been pre Borg. It would have been, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's that's low hanging fruit, Tara. Like, you, like I I I bent over backwards to get a Buffy reference, and that would have been just cheap, easy nonsense. That's what that would have been. Okay. I don't yeah. Think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what? Right. So neither of us get points this episode. Excuse me. I get points. I don't think so. Because you I'm use the, the word tingly? Come on. <laughs> I said the full sentence. I am the captain. I've always been the captain. <laughs> I get a point for that. A whole right. point. I forgot to say from the hit television show Star Trek The Next Generation. No, that doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. I'm not having this. I'm not having this cheap nonsense. You can claim your point, but I will dispute it. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> not Captain No. Captain Always. That has been the Atomic Serum Experiment. Thank you very much once again for watching and listening. And please do say in the comments if I should get a point for that Buffy reference. I think I should. Uh, but that has been us. So thank you once again. We will see you next time. Keep watching science fiction films and computer at Salsa. Yum, yum. <laughs>